Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. While at the Utah Wood Turning Symposium, I picked up a book by Dale Nish about Ray Allen and his work in segmented wood turning. Very inspirational. In fact, his inspiration is for this project. One of the conventions or rules in segmented work is to try and keep your rings flat and regular so that as you step up the base, everything grows nicely. In some of Ray Allen's work, he broke that convention. So if he can do it, why can't I? Why can't you? So let's make this bowl, call it a wild and crazy bowl, where the faces of the rings as it grows up the bowl are far from parallel. In fact, they're droopy all over the place. Let's make a droopy bowl. Since this segmented bowl is unlike anything I've ever done before, I could not make a detailed plan. I knew I needed many off-kilter segment rings, but it was brain-numbing to try and figure out sizes exactly per ring. So I decided to make three sets of rings. Each set would have four different woods, but be the same size. Each successive set would be larger. Plus I needed one large top ring and one small base ring. These are eight segment rings, so I'm cutting them at 22 and a half degrees. Then I glued the segments into half rings, using nails to separate the two halves. After sanding the half rings to fit, I glued them into full rings. Now for the major difference for this bowl. I clamped a fence on the bandsaw and tilted the table to cut each ring on a somewhat diagonal. I tried to saw slowly to avoid my blade tracking off target. After sawing my stack of rings, I had a long session at the sanding disc to smooth both faces of each ring. Obviously now, the two faces of each ring are not parallel. Then I had the bright idea to glue the rings in sets of four. That idea was awful. If you think gluing four rings that have parallel faces is a challenge, try gluing them when the faces are not parallel. Any clamping pressure on the skewed faces forces rings every which way, much beyond my intent. To add insult to injury, glue lubricates the rings, making the process almost like a clown comedy routine. Note to self, one ring at a time in the future. It's a good thing nothing had to be perfectly aligned. Now at the lathe, I needed at least some regular surface to sight on to glue the set of four together. So I mounted each set in my new homemade coal jaws to ream out the center. A piece of hardboard behind each stack of rings protected my chuck jaws from my tool. I started with a gouge, but my square carbide works much better as long as I take little bites. I smoothed the exterior of the large set by holding them in with my steel jaws in an expansion grip. The alignment was close enough for the rough cut I wanted to take. Next, I hot melt glued my top solid ring, one with parallel faces, to a large threaded wooden faceplate. Then I faced it off and trimmed the inside and outside just a little. Finally, I sanded the face to ensure it was even and flat. Then I tried to figure out how to glue my three sets of rings to the top ring. Remembering my circus act in gluing the individual rings, I only glued one at a time this time. I did spend a lot of time trying to optimize the slants of the two, three sets. Well, at least I tried to optimize them. With the last block of rings glued on, I flattened the bottom so it could accept the base ring. I wanted the base ring to be a full ring. But in retrospect, 
I should have glued the base on cockeyed anyway and then flattened the base. It would have looked better to not have a partial ring just above the base. Then I glued on the last ring for the base. I had pre-glued the base ring to another threaded wood faceplate and a waist ring. Next I flip the wood end for end, mounting it base down or base to the headstock. I'm using the large faceplate for tailstock pressure while I rough out the exterior. Once it's somewhat close to target, I remove the tailstock and continue to work on the exterior with a gouge. Now for the interior. I turned the tool rest as far in as I could into the bowl and went to work with a gouge. Then on to sanding the bowls before brushing on sanding sealer. I let it dry, sanded it, more sanding sealer, sanded it, more sealer. With sanding sealer done, I can reverse the bowl on my coal jaws and dress the bottom. Then a little more sanding and some wipe on poly and I have my crazy droopy segmented bowl. This bowl turned out nice, but not as dramatic as I'd like it to be. It was a test project, but I don't think I'll make another exactly like it and definitely not the same way. I learned a lot making it and have a lot of new ideas to test out that I think I will explore in future projects. Stay tuned. Meanwhile, you can add your suggestions in the comment area. Meanwhile, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield, please. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.